In my last video, I mentioned that I designed the actuators for the MCP joints, which essentially serve as the metacarpal bones in my design, to be modular and discrete so that they could move if necessary. In this video, I'm going to talk about the anatomy and kinematics of the joints that permit this motion in real human hands, which are called carpometacarpal joints, or CMC joints. The CMC joint which gets the most attention in the hand is the one at the base of the thumb. The thumb's metacarpal bone articulates on a little bone called the trapezium, and this CMC joint structure is called a saddle joint. Now, I've heard the saddle joint referred to as being the most complex joint in the human body, and they're also found in the ear and the ribcage. I'm pretty sure though that the thumb's saddle joint is the most mobile and highest load-bearing joint of its kind though. It has a reciprocally convex concave joint surface shaped like a saddle and this permits movement in three planes with only two axes of control. So that's flexion and extension, abduction and adduction and a really small amount of axial rotation. The range of motion in this joint is super difficult to define and understand and because this information is normally most useful to hand surgeons and physiotherapists, they're usually less concerned with exact numbers for ranges of motion and they get more benefit from practical tests like can the thumb oppose each finger and can the hand perform various different tasks and grip types. So what I could find in terms of absolute values for joint ranges of motion was 53 degrees of flexion slash extension, 42 degrees of abduction slash adduction, and 17 degrees of axial rotation. And that's based on the book Joint Structure and Function, a Comprehensive Analysis, which I'll link down in the description. Um, and I've also seen some other studies which put the range of motion in a similar ballpark. Also something to note, if you're confused about the terminology, flexion and extension, abduction, adduction, that sort of thing, it is really confusing and for that reason I've put some links in the description which should hopefully clarify some of that. So looking now at the CMC joints in the palm, um, they do seem to be a lot less studied and researched despite a 2013 study by Buffy et al describing them as being critical for functional tasks, especially those involving precision grasping. But it should be quite clear, just from observing your own hands, that the metacarpals in the palm are quite capable of moving and this seems to assist with different grip types. Now I'm not going to go into the exact ranges of motion for each different CMC joint in the palm, but the important point to note is that the second and third metacarpals almost don't move at all, and the fourth and fifth move roughly 10 degrees and 30 degrees respectively, on their weird sort of offset axes. Most current robotic hand designs don't have all of these degrees of freedom. Um, generally they'll have two axes of thumb movement comprising of a sweep across the palm on a tilted axis and a flexion extension towards the fingers. In terms of the CMC joints of the palm, which are the second through fifth CMC joints, uh, the shadow hand moves only on the final CMC joint, which is the CMC joint of the little fingers metacarpal, and its rotational axis is kind of offset from what would be the origin of the CMC joint in a real hand. Um, also, the in-move hand, interestingly enough, has both the final two CMC joints but with the same rotational axis. Other hands like the Fullalex hand has no movement in the CMC joints. Um, the highly biomimetic anthropomorphic robotic hand, which I'm just going to call HBARH now, um, it has everything obviously because it's um, like super biomimetic. So the trend is with most bionic hands and prosthetic hands, I think to, to simplify the movement to either just the final uh, CMC joint moving, um, the final two CMCs moving but with the same uh, rotational axis, or just to scrap this range of motion altogether. So in my old hand, um, I touched on how I created this motion in my last video. Uh, it was a sort of piston with a very poor mechanical advantage over the CMC joint of the fifth metacarpal. But the whole reason for having it set up that way was because basically just that's how tendons run in a rail hand and most of the mechanisms that I had in that original design uh, just kind of resembled the way that tendons work. I used a strip of nylon um, and I might have actually used a bike inner tube at one point just because I couldn't find any nylon. 
um, and I use that to connect the palm metacarpals so that when the final metacarpal flexed the fourth would follow it but since the third metacarpal was fixed um, it would end up in a position which was halfway between the two. My thumb design approximated the motion of the saddle joint with a sweeping rotation and two big pistons for flexion and extension which did have a much better mechanical advantage than the fifth metacarpal. So I essentially had the same solution as pretty much all bionic hands use um, and I didn't do anything about that 17 degrees of supposed axial rotation that the thumb has um, but you know I don't think any other hand really addresses this either. So how I intend to apply this research into my own new design. So one thing I want to address is that compliant actuation is on my mind right now and if you don't know what a compliant actuator is it's essentially an actuation system that can be forcefully moved from the motor's equilibrium position so you tell the motor to move to a specific position it goes to that position and stays there but then if you apply a force you're able to move the joint away from that position without damaging the motors in any way what i want to do with this project is to have a solid and reliable bionic hand platform with which i can develop a solid way to control test and evaluate it so i do think that the perfect bionic hand would definitely use compliant actuators but in order to develop my electronics and control system I want as few links in the sort of chain of actuation as possible just so that there's less to go wrong and then I want to work on optimizations like using compliant actuation so with that in mind I think that I'll start off by making some kind of gearbox um, to sit in the carpal section of the hand below the metacarpals and directly drive the fourth and fifth metacarpals. So where previously I mechanically linked the fourth and fifth metacarpals with nylon, I would like a more reliable connection that's less likely to steal power from the motors. Um, so I'm thinking of maybe having them connected in the gearbox and maybe using a reduction ratio so that the ring finger metacarpal only moves half or a third as much as the little finger metacarpal but I think that this could be really tricky if I'm going to stick with the offset axes that the rail hand has um, since they are very close um, combining them is a real option and I think that's you know what most baronic hands do so that's a decision I've got to make and I think it would make my life a lot easier to just combine these two axes uh, as for the thumb in my new design, the next joint along in the thumb after the CMC joint is an MCP joint, a metacarpophalangeal joint, with two degrees of freedom, just the same as the MCP joints of the fingers. So I would like to be able to use the same modular MCP actuator that I'm using for the rest of the metacarpals. In order to make it all fit and be robust enough though, I want to make that metacarpal actuator more compact and stronger. So I'm thinking actually of scrapping the idea of having two separate motors inside it and just going with one stronger motor in a hopefully more compact frame. Um, when I do get my hands on a resin printer, I expect I'll be able to find lots of ways to optimise this motor. Um, I suspect it may be the case that all of the actuation for the thumb's CMC joint will have to come from cable mechanisms originating in the forearm. Since I want to be able to use stronger motors for the joints of the thumb, and I expect a lot of the space in the carpal section of the hand will be taken up with the actuators for the palm CMC joints. So I think that my thumb CMC joint is going to be a relatively simple gimbal with some big pulleys, feedback sensors and bearings. Another thing to mention is that I've recently bought an SLA printer. So in the next video, I'll be talking about that and how I expect it to affect my design process. It looks like it's gonna have a really huge effect on the quality of my components. So I'm excited to show it to you all. As always, a massive thank you to all of my supporters on Patreon and thanks also to everyone else who watches my videos. I hope to see you all in the next video.